Well, welcome everybody. We are here at uh, Pick a Charge. Now, many of you, of course, know this battle as the Battle of Gettysburg. And essentially, when the Confederacy lost the war, Pickett's Charge was essentially the last opportunity for the Confederacy to win the Battle of Gettysburg. And we're going to approach it a little bit differently now. Um, it's going to be hard to do that. As you can see, we're getting hit pretty hard with uh, Federal artillery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing my artillery forward. Nelson, Carter, the rest of these guys, they're well-known uh, fighters. And Ramser, of course, is in the town of Gettysburg itself. Uh, but we're basically going to bring our boys forward just to soften up the Union with some major artillery strikes. It looks like Lane is already firing here. Um, I want to bring Davis's skirmishers forward, and I want to bring Jeff Davis forward himself, the general. But really what we're trying to do right now is just make sure that every single one of our artillery units are firing here. And we're not necessarily going to go for the typical charge. Uh, that Pickett did, and it actually wasn't Pickett. I've mentioned to my subscribers before, it was, it was Armistead. Pickett was way back here, okay, over here. You see where Pettigrew is, or Davis? This is where Pickett was. Meanwhile, the rest of his men were over here fighting the battle while he got all the credit for the charge. Well, it was a failure anyway, so what difference does it really make? Nonetheless, we're going to see if we can't win Pickett's charge, um, and to do that, we need to take the center here, and we've got to take Cemetery Ridge over here. Um, and that's going to be tough. So the first thing I'm doing, of course, is basically just making sure that we're firing at the enemy. Now, to actually put my plan into motion, I'm probably going to need to pause the game. But that being said, during the actual battle, um, the generals would have probably had full control over when the brigades moved out, etc. So I don't feel that guilty about pausing the game to make my movements. That being said, I am bringing as much support as I can to this charge. And it's probably not even going to be really much of a charge, although considering that the Union has this beautiful position here, uh, we may need to charge with some of our brigades. Let's bring Iverson forward, and I'm actually moving Iverson over here into the town of Gettysburg with Ramser, same with Doles. Right now, we're just going to give it a few minutes for our artillery to soften the enemy up. Um, might take a while, but uh, we're sure as hell not going to move forward until that has occurred. Put it that way. We're not even close enough to get shell shot or anything like that. I mean, this is pure round shot. It's really not enough to damage the enemy. And you can see these stone walls. It's one of the reason that, reasons that General Grant said that the future of war, warfare will be fought in trenches. Because once he saw uh, what happened at Cold Harbor, he realized that when the enemy has defensive barriers like this, like trenches and stone walls, it's very hard to beat them. So that's why a, a charge was kind of necessary. But we're going to try to go about it a little bit of a different way. It's going to be hard to do that. Um, but I'm going to do my best, guys. So wish me luck. We're still not attacking. We're still waiting just for the artillery to soften the enemy up, of course. Plane firing? I hope so. No, I'm not going crazy. I'm actually going to do the charge, but I'm going to do it my own way. So if I were the general of this battle, this is how I would approach it. Now, time is ticking down, and we've got to go ahead and make some moves. So I'm going to pause. We're going to take Gordon, move him forward. We're going to take Hayes, move him forward. We're still going to continue the fire from the artillery guns, but we're going to take this frontal line here, led by Hill. We're going to move forward here right up on the Union. We're going to keep our artillery firing. And again, I'm not expecting this charge to win, but I'm going to try what I would do in, in the Pickett's charge as opposed to what the Confederate generals did. We're going to take this, this line over here, uh, Archer's Brigade. We're going to move them forward. So we're going to bring Archer with them as well, as you can see over here. Uh, we're also going to take Watford. And with Watford, I'm just going to try to put them in kind of a decently wooded position. I'm going to keep Henry's brigade over here, and there's Armistead, in my opinion, the hero of this charge, really. He's going to stay back, and let's see what happens. This is probably not going to go very well, but let's go for it. Glory to the south, boys. We need Jeff Davis with us, so Jeff Davis is going to move with the men for the morale, 
As you can see, we're not running, but we might try to take one of these defensive positions. And for those of you in the stream, I certainly hope that you're doing something to assist our stream, because we need you right now. And now I'm going to move forward with Garnett, Armstead, and the rest of these boys. But the fact that these guys have cover behind a stone wall is going to give them tremendous cover against bullets. So uh, anything we do, we've got to get some guys in defense here. We're going to move right here in defense. Jeff Davis doesn't have to go forward that far. We don't need to lose him. But we're going to go ahead and move him back here. And uh, these guys over here in Gettysburg Town itself are going to move on Gilsa. These might be the only guys that actually lead any sort of charge. Um, so we actually have three areas we have to take, not just one. Apologies. Um, and I think Gilsa, Doles, and Ramser, those are probably the only guys I'm going to charge with. We're going to go ahead and hit Kershnowski with a charge. Move you will forward. We're going to also move forward with Doles, Ramser, and uh, Iverson. Hit them with a charge over here in the north. In the center of the battle, we're going to go ahead and just continue as, as planned. Set up for fire. Start opening fire here on the enemy. Now, there's a reason there needed to be a charge here, and that's because of the defenses. I mean, the enemy has uh, these fortified defenses, and we're not going to break through. As you can see, Hall hasn't lost a single man, even though we just opened up an entire volley. But we're at least going to get a little closer, right, before we start the charge. So we're marching forward first, and we may fall prey to the same issues that the Confederacy did during the charge itself. There's a second Union line behind this entire line, so even if we manage to break through, we still have a lot of work to do. Um, so once again, I'm going to have to pause. Yeah, some may say I'm cheating a little bit, but the fact is, without pausing, we're not going to get anywhere close to a victory here. So we're going to go ahead, and now this is where we're going to start the charge, and the charge was necessary because of all the cover. Armistead is going to charge. Kemper is going to charge. I'm going to keep some guys in reserve, so let's go for it. Come on, boys. Hill, get your ass up here. We need your support. Right? Keep moving. Davis, keep moving. Confederates have secured Seminary Ridge. There we go. We've got to start. We're also going to charge here with Posey and Lang and Davis. And once again, we are charging across open ground. We've also got these boys to the north. Some of them have already been repulsed. But here we go, my friends. That's what I'm talking about. Getting smashed by Willard's men. Willard was, of course, in a defensive position during this battle. And Jubilee Early is killed. He's my favorite Confederate general, too. So maybe we're not going to get so lucky. We'll send Armistead in. Come on, Armistead. Archer. We've got to bring these guys up in the south. These are going to be our, hopefully, the saving grace of this battle. The Union has resecured Cemetery Ridge. Archer, get your ass up here. Now we've got to go for that second line. We'll continue the charge with Armistead, which was, of course, if you guys watch old Civil War pictures, um, essentially Armistead was the guy with the hat on his saber, you know, telling his men to move forward. Move forward, Virginia, move forward. And that's what we're trying to do right now with Wright and Armistead. We want to charge. But over here in the north, we completely got crushed. No doubt about it. I mean, that was a bad charge, and we can see why. And this is partly why the charge failed. And I'm trying to do it my way. I'm still failing. You can't just fire at a, you know, a fortified area. You can certainly get into position at the fortified area and then start firing, which is what we're trying to do right now with Armistead and Pettigrew. Come on, but look at all those Union boys moving up. They definitely want a piece of us, and they're probably going to get it. We're going to move Archer forward and the 5th Alabama skirmishers. Right now, we're not charging anymore. Now, we're actually in open combat, trying to get some shots off. I'm going to grab our artillery and move forward. Same with Kemper, same with Broken Bro. Archer's trying to hold these guys together, but it's going to be very hard. And you can see that some of Archer's men have already run. We're getting some good shots on Cross, though. But you can see that this battle was a forlorn conclusion way before the charge ever occurred, which is why it should have never occurred, which is why the Confederacy during this battle should have run away. Pettigrew is already wounded. That's a major loss of the Confederacy already. But I will admit, 
you know, I was telling people during the stream, and those of you that are watching this stream, uh, make sure to use that super chat option to uh, allay my tears. I'm going to need money for tissues. Um, it wasn't possible to begin with. Um, you know, the Confederacy should have known that, and I think most of them did. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, Pettigrew knew. I know for a fact that Pickett knew. We call this Pickett's charge, but, you know, Pickett knew this was not going to work. So the entire idea was terrible, and Louis Armistead is killed, just like in real life. Look at that. Uh, now, Louis Armistead, in real life, he did die, but he died, uh, I think, many weeks after the Battle of Gettysburg. He actually survived for a while with a lot of bullets in him. Um, you can see over here all of the rebels down. We've got a few Federals down, too, and we're definitely going to try to hit Standard. But overall, we managed to route Standard. Overall, the Union's going to do just fine, um, unless we continue... And at this point, a charge would be madness. We could put right in this cornfield. We're going to keep moving forward. I'm going to put cable on uh, canister shot duty. See if we can't even out the odds here. Move Pettigrew down through the south. Move Armistead down through the south as well. But overall, boys, we are finished. And we got General James Longstreet. Move him forward as well. Mahone, we're going to send him in on a charge. Nope, he won't even charge. You see, that's what happens. The boys are tired now. The boys are sick of death. They're sick of getting shot at. We got as close as we could, tried to repeat a better version of the charge, but uh, it didn't work It didn't work out so well. Um, we're going to keep it up, guys, to the very end. See, we've got Koster fleeing. But even if Koster fled, even if the Confederates had broken this line, which... They didn't manage to, we did. Uh, the Union had another line behind this. This is why, during this entire battle, what the what the Confederates should have done is they should have retreated. It's really that simple. Um, sure, they would have lost Gettysburg completely, which they did anyway, but at least they would have had a chance to come back later and fight. The fact that they continued with this, it was a stubborn effort by uh, Pettigrew and by, uh, uh, of course, Pickett. You know, Armistead... He went through with it because he was a big, diehard fan of the South. Uh, but at the end of the day, Armistead got shot to shit. I mean, really got shot to shit. And um, he managed to at least uh, take some points. But in general, you know, he got blasted, died later of infection. And um, just absolutely a stupid idea. And that's why picking charge really is a dumb idea. Um, if the enemy, or if we had any chance, the Confederacy had any chance... Um, of winning this battle, it would have been won at a later a later date. Um, there's just no way that Pickett's Charge was a smart idea. They knew they were sending men to their death, and that is a tragedy. And we could see it here. I mean, I, I tried to approach this in a better way. I tried to do my version of Pickett's Charge, which I do believe was better. I'm, I'm pretty sure that casualty-wise, we're going to get a better uh, score. But you can see we're firing Carol. We just threw a whole volley at Carol. We killed two men with that volley because of the cover. And um, it's just an unbelievable unbelievable situation. Here in the north we seem to be doing okay now in terms of firing at the enemy, but look at Kurznowski, who's, by the way, not a great general, and this guy's not even taking that many hits. We're firing full volleys at this guy, but because of the cover he's got, he's not going down for one second. We'll move Ewell forward. Once again, don't forget about the super chat option, my friends, and uh, it's at the bottom of your chat screen. I hope at the end of this battle we've got some money for Agrippa to buy tissues. And actually, I, I, I'm a Yankee, so I, I wouldn't be that sad anyway. But nonetheless, I was I was kind of bragging, for those of you watching this video, I was bragging to my uh, my followers here on the the uh, live, or the YouTube uh, live stream that I could change this battle around, that I could win it, and I can't. I mean, we can maybe take this area here, but overall, we're not going to come out of this with a victory. It's just not going to happen. The enemy has too much cover, and... Especially in a situation like this, when you're fighting line combat, you cannot win this battle. I mean, you just can't. You know, maybe if the Confederacy had done a complete flank to the left, come around over here, which is impossible to do, um, maybe they would have won. But had I been the general of the Confederacy, had I been Robert E. Lee, I would have immediately retreated. I would have gone for guerrilla combat in the woods. Um, I would have gotten the hell away from the north and gone back to the south uh, and basically just set up a defensive line uh, because what, what we see here is exactly what Pickett's Charge brought us and that is just a total field of death for our men. 
Um, now, I might bring Kemper from the south here to attack Carol. Let's see how this works. Carol's getting hit hard, but look at that. Four, five, or six different volleys, and he's not even barely touched. So we're going to send Mahone and Wilcox in. Most of the other guys are too tired to charge. Kemper might be able to go in there and get an attack. But Garnett and Broken Bro are both in serious trouble. Bayonets! Come on, boys. It's rare that I find an Ultimate Journal Civil War battle I can't win. This is one of them, though. This is definitely one of them. Uh, now, could we have bombarded the area a little bit longer? Probably. Now, General Wilcox is wounded. See, we got Carol on the run, so... Like I said, there's a chance we could take this southern point, but it wouldn't make a difference in the battle itself. Now we're firing at the uh, artillery, but the artillery has their own defensive position, so we're going to send Pettigrew on a charge here. They got that canister shot for us, basically one giant shotgun. Um, and Armistead is still... No, Armistead's dead! That's right, he died earlier. Well, we're, we're staying pretty true to life during the battle. So here we go. And even with Jim D or Jeff Davis and uh, A.P. Hill over here bringing our guys as much uh, support for their morale as they can, you can't win it. You just can't win this fight. Even Plummer, 24 men. 24 damn skirmishers are holding off thousands of our attackers. And that canister shot is just sending us right to hell. So I'm going to keep moving forward with Armistead. I'm going to bring the rest of these guys forward as well. We'll try to take that southern area. It would be unbelievable if we could get a stalemate here. It really would be. I don't think it's going to happen. There we go. Look at that. Garrett is getting... Yeah, he's sending some of the boys back. Sent the uh, artillery back. Now Zook is going to, of course, step up. And if Armistead can keep on moving forward, that's going to be great. But look at all those dead rebels. I mean, we have... So many southern mothers are going to be crying. You can see all of the shots there from the artillery. It's unbelievable. We're also running out of ammo. Um, we do have some ammo wagons, but it wouldn't really make much of a difference, to be honest with you. I'll bring them in anyway. Maybe, maybe we could have brought forward the artillery uh, ahead of our infantry. They would have gotten shot at, first of all. But even if they did manage to, uh, to get where we are now, you know, I don't think it would have made much of a difference. You could just see the amount of canister shot that the enemy has. It makes all the difference. You know, the canister shot secondary to third lines of defense. It's not just a secondary line of defense here. There's a third line of defense as well. Um, so we secured Cemetery Ridge. Like I told you, we might be able to take that southern front. Maybe. That in itself is a bit of, a, of an achievement, basically. But now the Union's moving forward. And unless the Union makes a major mistake and starts charging us, we might be able to kill some of them, but they'll beat us in a charge for sure. So we're going to go ahead and turn our attention towards these Union flanks. We'll at least try to keep the south in our control. I'm going to try to move everybody forward that I know how to move. Take Pettigrew as well. Try to have him charge this uh, artillery position. And Armistead, sure enough, despite him dying, and he did die during the battle, if his brigade was about to get this far, he would have been so proud. I mean, if they were able to take this southern point of the battle, that would have been incredible. But look at that. We've got some bayonet combat in the center. Managed to get Koster to move back. There's not a lot of blue coats dead on that field. The amount of blue coats down on that field is negligible. Um, what about the north? All right. Go for it, Yule. Go for it, son. Charge in the north. Come on, boys. Give him hell. There's not much they can do here. There's really not much. I mean, the charge is working there right now. There's they're a nasty bayonet combat. You can see it, but uh, we're losing men like flies here, my friends.
And me and actually the creator of this game, Nick Tomatis, um, who also did all of the uh, Rome Total War mods, um, good friend of mine, really awesome guy from Greece, you know, uh, he tried to beat me in this game. And, and listen, I, I'm not the greatest player in the world. This is one of the few games that I'm actually okay at. I'm actually pretty good at this game. Um, but he tried to beat me in Pick His Charge, and I think I've only beaten him in one other battle. And when he played as the Confederacy and I played as the Union, I beat him. I mean, you can't win. You just can't win. This is why, in my opinion, <laughs> had I been a Confederate, uh, let's say I'd been Jefferson Davis, the Confederate president, I would have tried uh, Pickett for war crimes because he basically sent his men to death. There was no way to win this battle. You know, it was one of those, it was almost like sort of Napoleon during Waterloo um, sending the, uh, the Imperial Guard forward knowing they would die. There's just no benefit to that. I mean, there were so many different ways to approach this battle. Not to say I'm a supporter of the South at all. I mean, I'm a Yankee by birth. Well, by birth, I'm actually a rebel. But, uh, you know, honestly, I probably would have fought for, for the Federals. I would have fought for the Yanks. Um, that being said, this entire battle was totally avoidable. Um, the, the outcome of the battle was totally avoidable. And the Confederacy would have been much better off just accepting a retreat, accepting that they lost the fight, retreating, of course, moving back, and uh, going elsewhere to fight. Because uh, in this particular situation, I mean, there was no way no way and we could try we could play this a thousand times we might win maybe two out of those thousand times because of luck um, and game mechanics otherwise you guys can see right here I mean I tried to take the charge differently I tried to do it my way and I still can't win um, it's just not gonna happen so we're gonna see the end of this battle uh, very soon I hope we have some awesome people in super chat we've had them all night so I hope I have a present when I get back it's gonna make Agrippa very happy uh, and even, uh, you know, Davis here, he's not going to be able to help our boys. Lane can set up, but he's already screwed. He's going to get caught by Standard. And just look at that. I mean, this is the farthest we got. You can see right here the Union line. This is the farthest we got. We did manage to take the South. That's a nice nice grab. And we, we, made, we actually got farther than the Confederacy did during the actual battle. But even taking the South, I mean, just look at that. Just even taking the southern part of the battlefield at Gettysburg. We're not going to win, you know, if the battle continued. We still have the entire center to take. We still got the north to take. We lose it either way. Um, you know, no matter what happens, either even if you do the best possible attack, you lose. Um, and that's the entire thing with me and Pickett's Charge. It's just, what a waste of life, man. What a waste of life. Whether you're for or against the Confederacy, you can agree militarily it was a stupid decision. Um, over here, you know, just all that cover and all that sh all that shell shot and canister shot just littering the battlefield. Rebel bodies everywhere. I mean, you can just see the poor guys. Whoever was there during Pickett's Charge, you know, I've got respect for them. I might not support the, uh, the rebels or the Confederacy, but I've got respect for anybody willing to cross that battlefield because you were walking towards certain death. Might as well have just stood up against a wall in Gettysburg Town itself and just said, shoot me. Because that's essentially what happened. And look at that, Mahone is wounded now. At least we didn't get a lot of dead generals. We mostly got wounded generals. Um, but I really want to see the final tally here. Which is coming up very soon. Finish. And it's a draw! Holy shit! Well, I'm surprised. I think because we took the south, we got a draw. Nonetheless, um, I'm not tooting my own horn here. Because... At the, end of the, at the end of the day, this is a game. Um, in the real Pickett Charge, even with me in command, even if we got a draw initially, it would not have been a draw. It would have ended in a defeat. Um, let's take a look here at the casualties. 27,791 dead on our side. 28,000... Oh, that's the starting point, sorry. 18,371 dead on our side. 6,083 dead on the Union side. I mean, even if it was a victory, it would be a Pyrrhic victory that would hurt us later on. Uh, but I am kind of proud of myself that I was managed to get a stalemate, essentially a a draw. That being said, look at this. We got Pettigrew wounded. We got William Mahone wounded. We got Cadmus Wilcox wounded. Uh, we got Benjamin Eshelman wounded. I never heard of Benjamin Eshelman, by the way. Louis Armistead dead. Well, that happened anyway. Jubal Early, my favorite general from the Confederacy, dead. Uh, very, very sad day. Overall, you know, we still just proved that, sure, maybe you can get a draw which I consider a pretty big achievement, honestly. Uh, but 
that draw is going to turn into a defeat, and with that many men lost, especially since the Confederacy had less men than the Union, that's a defeat no matter how you look at it. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, share the video with your friends, and uh, have a great, great, awesome day.